Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast, Raw Rundown. My name is Adam Glenn. Over there is Dax Holt. This is the Raw Rundown. What is that? We give you the top 10 stories of the week so you know everything that's going on in pop culture. So you seem like you know what's going on in the whole celebrity pop culture world. Uh, My name is Adam Glenn. Over there is Dax Holt. Two entertainment news journalists that are black belts in the industry. We've broken some of the biggest stories in the world. We kind of work on some of the biggest stories of the world. We've been a part of the biggest stories of the world. So we try to give you our take, our insights, and everything that's going on. How do we decide the top 10 stories? Um, It's on data. It's on Google search. And lastly, it's based on our personal uh, opinion. But mostly it's on the data. Um, Over there is Dax Holt on the West Coast. I'm here on the East Coast. Dax Holt is going through it this week. Uh, Dax had surgery this week. He is almost transitioned. No, Dax, can you tell (laughs) tell us about the surgery you had this week that you're kind of... uh, God, I feel like shit right now. But Lex, I'm here for the fans. I I made it out two days out of surgery, and I'm here. I had an abdominal hernia fixed this week, and um, I, uh, I am a mess right now, Adam. I had... I was poked and prodded, and I've got four new holes on the side of my body where they put in the laparoscopic instruments, and uh, it's been a rough week, but uh, I'm here, and I'm going to try to make it through this, so give me some grace this week, guys, if I am slow. Um, Laughing hurts. Everything basically hurts right now, but uh, I'm pushing through. That's right. Dax Holt is our Caitlin Clark. Thank you for uh, toughing up (laughs) and doing the, uh, the podcast this week. Um, I had a busy week. I was with, uh, I had the Met, we're going to get into it. I, I, I was at the Met Gala. I wasn't at the Met Gala. I kind of covered it. I was at the hotels, which is like part of the Met Gala. Um, then I also interviewed a big WWE wrestler. I was with, uh, Oprah. A lot happened this week. All right. Before we get to our raw rundown, we, um, we read reviews. We read them all the time. We love them. We support them. So, um, we just, you know, it's the best thing to do to support this podcast. When you give us a review, we actually read them on the air. Dax, do you have a review ready for us? I do. All right. This one comes from Monica Hines. It's a five-star review. Awesome shoe. Awesome shoe. Oh, maybe show. Great job. Great job at keeping the show engaging. I like to watch you on YouTube. The hosts are hot, hot, hot. Oh, hell yeah. Well, uh, neither one of us are hot, hot, hot today. We both look like a hot mess, but uh, we'll take that. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Appreciate you taking some time, leaving us a review. And if I say anything crazy again, I'm on a lot of painkillers today, so just ignore it and move on. All right. If I say anything <laughs> crazy, I'm going to go with that same excuse, too. I'm on painkillers. Even though I'm not, I just want to have some sort of uh, excuse. You know, excuse. You know, I don't want to get canceled for no reason. So at least you can say, hey, you know, it was painkillers. Um, all right, Dax, let's get to the raw rundown, starting with number 10. Uh, Number 10, Shakira scoring big in her whole tax evasion saga. You remember she uh, was accused of tax evasion uh, a couple of years ago. She went through the whole thing, ended up paying like $7 million to uh, Spain. And now there was a second one that got brought up saying that she was accused of owing Spain 6.7 million euros, which is $7.2 million in taxes. Uh, for some uh, for for work that she did in 2018, her income there, um, and that they said that it was via an offshore company, and she denied any wrongdoing. Well, now uh, prosecutors have moved to dismiss the case, claiming there's not enough sufficient evidence to proceed. So now it's going to be up to the judge on that case who decides whether or not they want to move forward or not. But I think it's kind of interesting if the prosecutors were the ones trying to slam her for this, and now they've changed their mind, saying there's not enough evidence. Uh, That's a huge, huge win for Shakira. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm assuming this one will go away. I remember in the last one, she's claimed she hadn't she did no wrongdoing. But instead of dragging her family through a big old long lengthy court case, she decided to just pay it off. She goes, look, by me paying doesn't mean I'm guilty. I just don't want to deal with this. So 
Like, Dax, how does it get to this point? Is it just bad accounting? Is Shakira at the wrong? Does she have bad people running her business? How does it? I think I think when you make so much money, you really have to have the right people in place to be watching over your money because I think it could be really easy to slip up. You know, if if someone puts money in one spot or doesn't re- report on it in another spot, like you at the end of the day, you are in trouble for it. So you really have to have a good team surrounding you so you don't make, you know, massive mistakes that land you in court. So something like this, obviously, it comes down to Shakira. But do you think Dak Shakira ultimately knew what was going on? Or she's just like, oh, my God, I have to deal with this stuff, even though I have nothing to do with this. I hire people to take care of it. Unfortunately, they didn't do their job. It's hard to say, man. Like, you know, we looked at Teresa Judice, remember? And that whole thing, we're like, is she smart enough to be able to know what's right and wrong here? Or is she just listening to what other people are saying? I don't know. So I would say the same with Shakira. Like, she's smart enough. We all know that. It's just a matter of, do you trust the people around you? So when they say, hey, we're going to move some of this money to this offshore account. We're moving this money. This will save us on taxes. Doesn't mean it's tax evasion, but it may save us on taxes. You, you tend to believe the people that went to school for this stuff, you know? If you were Shakira dealing with this, would you be embarrassed? Yeah. And no one Because it to be does reflect on you, in my opinion. I'd be like, oh, you, you think I'm really having financial troubles, which I'm not. It's just. Well, not even that. You think I'm being sneaky and I'm trying to not pay ta- taxes when everyone else who has way less money around the country is having to pay taxes. It just yeah. makes her look bad at the end of the day. Yeah, it stinks. And it seems like, dude, you know what's so funny? I I never go for Shakira. I get tips on her all the time, but a lot of people do. She seems like Why, really dude? nice. You should hundred percent. She's one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah. Why would I just you not go for like Shakira? Deal, it's not her personally. It's like you deal with the fans who are like obsessed with her. And mm-hmm. um, like, I don't feel like dealing with like the whole like chaos with it. However, every time I sort of like um, deal around her, like I'm around her, like I, she yeah. seems really nice. But she's good to the fans. As big as she is, she's very good to the fans. Yeah, no, she she's all about her fans, I think. Most of that. Like, that's really what her thing is, you know? Yeah. Fans, family, music. That's her her shit. What's not her thing is taxes. She let <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, Dax number nine. Uh, number nine, Travis Kelsey. One more gig landing under his belt. This guy is like everyone's throwing everything at him. It's amazing right now, but uh, it's going to be his first major acting role. um, And it is for a horror gig. So um, uh, Nishi Nash is going to be starring in this new series called Grotesquerary. I think that's how you say it. Grotesquerary. Something like that. How you say it. Uh, It's a new Ryan Murphy upcoming uh, series. And it looks like Travis Kelsey is uh, going to be playing some part in this, it, they they really haven't said much on what the role is, but Nisi Nash did post a video on her Instagram basically saying, look who my new co-star is going to be for this new series. And then he jumps in and they both smile and laugh. And it's like a, a cute little moment. Uh, remember, he did do Saturday Night Live back in 2023. He did a great job on that. And it just seems like everyone wants a piece of him now that he is so connected with Taylor Swift. Um, obviously he's going to be hosting the, are you smarter than a celebrity that's coming up? Um, and, and yeah, he's just doing really well. Damn. Here's the thing is this shows you that this is show business. People have to start taking away acting in Hollywood, start calling it show business. It is all about the business is Travis Kelsey the best actor for the part? No. There's people that have worked their whole life in theater and plays on screen to get roles like this. But the executives and producers behind there are saying, we need to make this show or movie work, this project work. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have Travis Kelsey because this is going to bring in numbers. And yep. I can only imagine what other actors, when they when stuff like this happens, they're just like, man, I'm losing roles because I didn't go on some reality show. I didn't go on and start dating a big celebrity just because I'm trying to live a normal life and just trying to be an actor. Like it's all part of the game. Um, well, you know what? I, I felt like we used to hear this a lot from models, uh, models that would work, you know, their lives trying to become this big name in the modeling. And then all it takes is one huge actor who's more famous to get that gig as the Tommy Hill face of Tommy Hill figure, the face of, 
Hermes, the face of Saint Laurent, what whatever it is, and all these models are like, dude, what the hell? So you're you're just literally blowing past us because that person's more famous. Yeah, that's what happens in show business. You're just going for the bigger name, who's going to bring in more people, who's going to be more recognizable. I mean, honestly, me and you have had those sort of issues in our career, you know, where jobs that we were trying to go for are now going to people who went on The Bachelor and went on six episodes yeah. and they just became a social media star. And uh, it's just the way the times are. And it's tough and you just got to adapt because, again, the, at the end of the day, it's show business. Travis Kelsey, he's a hot star. He moves the needle. And, you know, I'm not mad at Travis Kelsey. I get him. It's just – shows you how the industry works is he the best person for his job probably not i'm sure there's it, other it also shows out there. you how being connected to taylor swift that taylor swift uh, effect like everything is blown up for him right and yeah. i'm not saying football because he was already an amazing football player so i'm not going to go down that route and say he won the super bowl because because that's not the case he was already unbelievable one of the best tight ends if not the best tight end out there and now he's getting even he's the highest paid tight end in the NFL. Um, I think the NFL is like just salivating all over him because he's bringing in so many ratings because of her showing up to games. So it's just it's, it's wild. Whatever she touches turns to gold, man. Yeah, good. Not mad at him. Don't hate the play. Hit the game. It is what it is. Dex, number eight. Number eight, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie reteaming for a new reality TV show, uh, which is pretty unbelievable. So this is, you know, this will be the first time they get back together since doing the the simple life back in the what was that early two thousands when that first uh, appeared on air, yeah. And it was such a massive, massive hit. Like for people that didn't watch it, it was such good reality television because it was so ridiculous and over the top and putting these super rich girls in um in situations that they would have never been in before and uh it just really kind of catapulted them to another level of stardom very quickly um they're reteaming there's not many details however behind what they're doing together it's just like they're doing something and it sounds like there was an all-out bidding war between uh production companies on who was going to be uh producing this show and it sounds like um uh, James Corden's production company, Fullwell 73, reportedly got the rights to shoot it. I'm uh, not sure what network will be airing it, but uh, people are very, very excited to see what these two are doing. I wish I had more details for you, but there's not much more than that out there. It's going to be big. I, I wouldn't say big, but people watch it. People tune in. I think people are just excited to see Paris back to being Paris. Nicole Richie, well, she already, you don't really... And, and remember, she's already doing the like um, Paris and Love show on Peacock. So she's yeah. actively on TV right now. Um, but seeing these two come back together, I think, is what people really want. Yeah, we want to see Paris being Paris. When I say being like that fun type of person that like, she first came on screen with, especially when she teamed up with Nicole Richie. I mean, it was great content. And if that show came on, if social media was on during that time, was going on during that time when that when the Simple Ed first came on, there have been so many memes that came from it because they had so many great lines. I mean, Nicole Richie was hysterical. Nicole, yep. people forget about how funny and fun Nicole Richie was. And then you team up with Paris. They were a great duo. They were a great team. They made great content. So I don't know much. We we don't know much about what the show is going to be, but I do think it, there's going to be a lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement. I hope they build up to it, not ruin it. And um, yeah, smart move. Yeah. Smart move. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Loves love it. I love the look. Oh, um, Dax, I, my seven. I said that too loud and now all my stitches almost popped out. Okay. <laughs> Number seven. Number seven, Kristen Stewart, not happy with Hollywood. She's basically calling Hollywood phony and blasting the industry for elevating only a few female stars in the whole studio system. She did an interview with Porter magazine where she's basically, I'm going to summarize this story. She's, she's basically saying like, look, Studios feel like they need to check off the box of diversity, um, that it is very male driven industry, but they'll let a couple select females get in there and produce a movie or direct a movie. And that's about it. And she calls out uh, Margot Robbie as one, Maggie Gyllenhaal. And the second that they like make a movie, the studio goes, OK, we did our job now moving back on. Let's have another male do uh, the next movie. And she just says, you know, it's it's really frustrating and it's a, a phony ass industry. Um, keep in mind that she has been now leaning more into a lot of the um, 
independent films recently, but she is doing her own directorial work as of late. And I think she's just seeing how frustrating it can be that uh, to me, it's her saying she isn't one of those select uh, women directors at this moment. And I think she is working really hard to becoming um, a, a well-known person a as a director. And she just it isn't being allowed in is what it sounds like. Um, Adam, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? That's a big statement to say. I don't know when you say something like I that. I wouldn't say it's inaccurate, though. I mean, you look I around and this is, this is a big complaint that a lot of people have had for many, many years is, hey, we look at the Oscars, there's either no women nominated or one, and sometimes it feels like they just threw that in just so that they wouldn't get yelled at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I don't disagree. You know, it's, uh, they have their people that they yep. count on that they know are workhorses that perform. She's probably more involved than I, I'm surprised. I'm sure she's, I shouldn't say I'm sure. Cause I don't know, but I'd be curious how many parts she would love to get, but she doesn't get those offers, you know? And then you wonder how many offers she gets where they're just, but it's, because but I don't think it's even, motive. I don't even think it's the, the acting because she can get acting roles. I think it's the directing role. I think it's the producing roles. I think that's where she's frustrated is, you know, you've got all these men who are producing huge movies when women could do the exact same job, if not better, but you're not giving them the opportunity to prove themselves or you'll do it once or twice here, let Margot Robbie do it, but then, okay, cool. We let her do one, check the box off. Now back to status quo, you know, S saying, comments like this publicly mm -hmm. do you think this is gonna be like a taraji p henson where it shake things up and maybe things go in her direction or are people gonna say you know what sit back and time out again we're not gonna move we're not gonna that's now it. that because we're gonna be like yeah we're still good on you like do you that's think this is gonna... i don't know if it helps her unfortunately i you know what i'm saying like i don't know if calling the industry shitty is going to help get her point across uh, you know, I just see people being like, all right, well, don't hire her. But she I mean, she's doing a lot of stuff. It's just more in the independent space. You know, yeah. um, she did the Love Lies Bleeding that came out in March. Um, yeah, but so it's I, like, does she really move the needle? Growing. No, like it, do people care? Does she have that sort of audience where they're going to kind of travel for her? For example, if Margot Robbie does a movie, you mm -hmm. trust her team picks the right project for her. Same thing with a guy like, you know, not compared to another, Leonardo DiCaprio. If Leonardo DiCaprio does a movie, you're going to watch it because they did their due diligence to set a great team around it where you know it's going to be a great project. Does Kristen Stewart have that team? I don't think so. However, she might not be given those opportunities like a Margot Robbie. So it's you know it's what a complicated I think? thing. I, just, I think because egos are so easily bruised in Hollywood, I think a better way to handle, like when you're frustrated with this, I think if she was to say, I see people like Margot and Maggie getting the opportunity, I want the opportunity. Yeah. Because I have the talent that these other women have. I almost feel like then the door might open for you rather than saying like, fuck all these people and then expecting them to give you a job. Yeah. You're right. I don't know. Uh, it's, I don't know. Then, it's probably then so, it's so they, tough. Then also it kind of works against you because they feel like they're forced to give you a job because she said something. It's, it's a very tricky situation. And again, it's show business. There's so much politics involved where I didn't realize the politics that were in the industry until I got involved. Then I'm like, oh my God, this is its own reality show. It's yeah. pretty insane. Um, Dax, uh, number six. Number six, Andy Cohen talking all about the uh, Real Housewives uh, uh, reckoning and also about his relationship with John Mayer. Uh, so he sat down with The Hollywood Reporter, did a whole in-depth interview with them. But one of the main things that sticks out is him addressing his whole, you know, being in love with John Mayer and their relationship that always has people talking and questioning whether or not they're an actual couple because they spend so much time together. They sleep in the same hotel rooms. They, they have, you know breakfast on balconies together they we've seen them kiss and uh he says look um we are so affectionate towards each other people don't know what 
box to put that in. They assume we're sleeping together, which we are most definitely not. Uh, he basically went on to say that, um, you know, in the past, he said that we're in love with each other and they've had a strictly platonic friendship uh, for, for years that they've just, they really hit it off, but they are definitely not sleeping together and they never have. And he wanted to clear that up. And, you know, I think it is, you, you do see them hanging out so much and people almost can't fathom like that uh, a straight male and a gay male can have a, such a tight relationship. And that's like, it's good. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone yeah. has to twist it into something that it's not. Yeah. They, 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 if they're genuine friends, they're, they they enjoy each other's company, and it's got to be weird for both people that people just start to pigeon and say, "Oh, they're probably hooking up," and they're like, "Dude, we just get along well. We're and best friends. We are literally tied as thieves. Like we love hanging out with each other. Stop making it more than it is. Let us be best friends. That's it." Yeah. So, but so, Andy, this is the first time he sort of talked about sort of the allegations against him. I think that really hurt him personally that people are kind of coming against him where how he treats the Bravo how, housewives and the Bravo community as far as the cast members yeah. and the, the editing of the show. And I think he was sort of talked about in the story just how much it really affected him because – well. What's funny is he really can't talk on most of it, though. So they they asked him, they said, you know, tell us about, you know, Ebony Williams and um, and her claiming racism while producing the show. And he was like, well, I can't really speak on her particular experience. Um, I'm no longer in charge of programming decisions, but I'm proud of all the work that uh, Bravo has put into making the shows more representative of the country's demographics. And then they asked him about the Brandy Glanville, Caroline Manzo situation and sexual harassment, Leah Sweeney, McSweeney. And uh, he basically said, well, I can't really talk about that either um, because there's obviously a lot of stuff going through court right now. But he will say that alcohol, um, that they've worked with a lot of people that are sober on different shows, and like Countess Luann, and that there's people that will go, you know, filming uh, an entire season without picking up a drink. And some of these people don't even need drinks. So I think he's, I don't think he's necessarily dismissing what they have to say, but saying like, we never force people to have drinks. There's a lot of people that make great TV content without a sip of alcohol. And so if like, don't blame him basically. Yeah. I think he ultimately, I think based on the way I read this story is like, he's hurt by it all. And he never went with the attention of like, Hey, I need to kind of hurt these people in, in some ways. Now there's different people at different experiences, but I don't think, it was ever his intention to kind of get to this point, you know, even yeah. the way reality TV shows producers have a, um, a reputation of sort of ruffling the feathers. He's like, that was never what I was trying to do. But again, like you said, he's not involved with the programming. He's just his own guy. Now he's bigger than that. Um, yeah. All right, Dex, number five. Number five, Lindsay Lohan's abrupt exit from a sitcom years ago makes Bette Midler wish she would have sued Lindsay Lohan. So this was a big story that came out this week. Um, she was sitting down, Bette Midler, that is, was sitting down having a conversation. Um, and I forget whose podcast she was doing. Anyway, she she was talking about how she had done like this it was TV. David Duchovny. David, David, yeah, I, I remember, like, I remember got, Everyone's someone. got a podcast now. Yes, literally everyone has a podcast. Uh, but she was sitting down talking to David Duchovny um, and saying that, you know, she had this show called Bette. And there was a pilot that uh, happened years and years ago, and it had Lindsay Lohan starring in it. And Lindsay pulled out right after the pilot. She decided, never mind, not going to do this. Didn't really give any reasons. Just And this was before Lindsay became Lindsay Lohan. This was right after like the parent trap. So before uh, Mean Girls, before all of this other stuff, um, she was supposed to do this. So she was pretty young at the time. Uh, but because she pulled out, everything went into chaos at the network, and they basically fired Bet the next day, and that whole show got canceled. And Bet was just like, I wish I would have known more. I wish I would have stood up for myself. I wish I would have threatened to sue them for pulling out because you can't do that. Like, that's the whole point of a pilot. You, sh you sign contracts with the actors so that you shoot a pilot, 
And when they green light it, it's the same people moving forward that were in the pilot. I mean, you can always switch people out, but an actor isn't supposed to leave at that point. And because Lindsay bailed, well, the whole thing went to hell. And Bet had said that this was basically the worst experience of her entire life, which is funny because the other day, Lindsay actually posted a photo of her and Bet Midler together on social media and just said, throw back to this time that we worked together. So I'm like, uh, that's awkward. I Did Lindsay do that on purpose or did that moment remind Bette Midler of what happened and decided to talk about it? That, I don't know. I think uh, it was more Bet. It, it was more of Bet. I think, revealing, just finally kind of coming to um, terms with it. Um, mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, I, do you think, but... I still don't understand why Bet would still sue Lindsay. Yeah, the show didn't work out, but no, she's not going to do it. That she wishes she would have done. She, it I know she point. wishes she would have done it, but what would be the? I don't because understand she, why the case. Bet felt like that series had legs. She feels like that could have been the next big career move for her, and I mean, I she probably put everything into it. And I can understand that. Like you have a show. It's very hard to get shows greenlit. You've got the cast. Everyone's into it. And then someone decides, never mind, I'm out. You're going to be pissed, right? Like, Yeah, but that's just a casting thing. I mean, I feel like stuff like this happens all the time. Yeah, but Lindsay was a big star at that. Like she wasn't Mean Girls star, but she had just come off a very successful movie. So her and Bette working together was going to bring in that audience. And without her, the show crumbled. So I think she solely blames Lindsay Lohan for the crumbling of that show and derailing her from having another successful TV show. I would I would love to see how that case plays out in court and if they would actually if it were just settled. Well, or... I think I think Lindsay might. It depends on their contract back in the day, but it sounds like they didn't have the right contract in place to uh, to hold her. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Dax number four. Number four, uh, there was a security guard shot outside of Drake's home in Toronto. This in the midst of all of the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beefing going on. I mean, granted, they've been doing this for months and months and months, but I feel like over the last week, they they have really stepped up their their beefing game. Um, and uh, there was a security guard working at Drake's mansion in Toronto. And uh, I guess he was lured outside at about 2 a.m. when their car pulled up and was playing super loud music. And when the security guard got outside, they basically started shooting and took off. Um, And he was found suffering from an apparent gunshot wound and remains in the hospital in serious condition. Uh, Police have not confirmed whether the Canadian rapper was home at the time of the shooting. uh, But I know his team is uh, cooperating with the investigation. And so... um, kind of scary that that there's at this point they're not saying there's any link to Kendrick Lamar and I I don't I don't think Kendrick would do something like that but shit I don't know you know what I'm saying I I think I think Kendrick likes to beef through music I don't think he is sending people out to shoot other people Um, but maybe I'm crazy I just I don't think that would be the case I almost wonder if it's just a some crazy fan who is maybe a Kendrick fan who's trying to like you know, show that his allegiance to Kendrick or something weird like that. Yeah, the guard is actually so. What happened was it was like two in the morning. A car pulls up in front of Drake's house, blasting music. Security guard kind of like lord, like kind of goes and checks it out. It doesn't like go up to car. It's apparently uh, this is according to the Toronto Star. He, you know, is kind of lured outside uh, to see like what's going on from the car blasting music. Then the person whips out a gun and starts shooting at him, hits the person and the security guard in the upper body, possibly the right arm. Um, the security guy is a person is hospitalized with serious life threatening injuries. Um, I mean, it's pretty serious. So um, yeah, it's, but this is, you know, obviously people are still thinking about the Drake and Kendrick kind of back and forth. The rap Which is funny. It's like, to each other. It's kind of silly, this whole thing. Like, at the end of the day, uh, don't get me wrong, but isn't Drake way more successful than Kendrick Lamar? Like, I know Kendrick has crazy talent, but couldn't Drake just, like, put up some of the records that he's broken and been like, I'm literally the most successful rapper, an artist 
of all time. Like, not gonna. Yeah, lie. true. But they're different type of artists. I mean, I think more of uh, Kendrick Lamar is more of like a, a poet. He's like a West Coast poet. People love his lyrics. Drake is more uh, fluid. He's more style, and uh, at least my personal opinion, he's more. You know, his style is more almost like romantic R and B. Right? It's a sound that we're not really used to. Is he rap? Yeah, but it's not really just rap to me. Like he sings a little bit. Kendrick is more of like a a Tupac, where he's more of like a storyteller. Um, I, again, do I, think, I don't really do, listen to yeah, these. These two used to be really good friends. Like they toured together. They did a lot of stuff together. Do you ever wonder if they call each other up and they're like, you know what, if we start a, a beef, this could be really good for both of us. I'd be curious if the beef starts with a phone call and they also conversate between the two while the public is kind of going back and forth over it. But the rap, the hip hop genre feels itself over beefs. I mean, this is not just the first time there's been hip hop. I mean, he's been going on for over 30 years now, these, these beefs. So it, it fuels that audience. They love it. It gets people talking about that, their music and their, their business and their brands. So, yeah. I mean, it's part of that industry. It's like pro wrestling in a way, you know, it's, it's not real. It's on the surface. And then years later you see him hanging out. I mean, look at the other day, you see fat Joe and 50 cent hanging out at the Knicks game together. And then people don't realize a few years ago, these guys hated each other. They're going back and forth shitting on each other. So I think it's just part of that genre. Yeah. It's part of the business. It's it's I don't get it, but again, that industry kind of feels on that. Dax, the number three story. Uh Bethany Frankel and Paul Burnin have now split after six years of dating. Um, they've been on and off, I feel like, for many years. They they started dating back in uh, what was it like 2018, I think after meeting him on a dating app. Um, and then they like broke up and then they got back together. Then they got engaged. And now it seems like they are done and that it would just, according to a, um, a someone close to them, a source close to them told us weekly, it just wasn't going to work out. Um, and they split again about two months ago saying that they're just two very different people. He's under the radar kind of guy. She clearly is not. She likes attention. She likes being out there in the public. Um, but uh, I think one thing that has gotten a lot of people talking is she's been wearing her giant engagement ring in social media videos recently. And so people are like, wait, are you together? Or are you not together? Like, I don't understand what's happening. Well, it sounds like she's actually keeping the $1 million engagement ring because uh, there it's was another... 10, yeah, it's a 10 carat emerald cut diamond ring valued at approximately $1 million. So here's my thing though. So a lot of these really like successful women in Hollywood, when they get engaged, they will either put down a lot of the money so that they have the ring that they want. So I wouldn't be surprised if she bought the ring and she's like, of course I'm keeping the ring. I freaking bought it. Why would I, why would I not? I like the ring and I'm going to just keep wearing it. Would that be weird? Ugh. Like if she, yeah, look, if tomorrow I, she said, if tomorrow she said, look, I liked the ring. I went on and bought it. At the end of the day, I, I'm i keeping it because it was my money. Wouldn't that put a different spin on it? Then it's not as much of an engagement ring as this was a nice ring that I liked. But what if you made it into something else? What if you made it um, into, into like, like a, a belly button piercing? A belly button ring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a belly button ring. But, you know, you could take the diamonds, make it into a chain, a, another bracelet, a ring. Do you still put that ring on your hand? I, You're not wrong. It just depends on the style of the person or however they want to wear it. Because to me, it's just jewelry. I don't I don't think anything more of it. I don't have that sort of uh, relationship with jewelry. I, I, don't, I don't wear anything. So I, I don't have – I don't care enough. For her, yeah. she's like, I bought it. I like it. I designed it. I well, I don't. I, it. Again, this is that was me speculating. She bought yeah, it, sure. just I get because it. that happens a lot, you know. With um, especially women that have way more money than the guy, they're like, no, I want, I want what's going to look good on my finger, and you know it, that happens. Yeah. So, anyway, um, I don't know. No, it's Bethany's. She seems like a lot. I'm not. Listen, I don't know her personally. I've met her a bunch of times. She's somewhat nice to me i've never had a bad experience with her um but she's like pretty decently nice to me um, she did change when she had her remember she had a talk show for a little bit when she got a talk show yeah. she kind of got a little 
nose hide from you for a little bit, but then she's kind of calmed down. But she's very vocal on social media. She does a lot of hot takes that are very controversial because she kind of ruffles the feathers. This guy seems more, a little bit more under the radar. I don't know her. I'm not in a relationship with her. On the surface, based on what I see, it seems pretty intense. I don't know. She's yeah. she's she's an alpha. It's in a, in a relationship. Well, there's there's a reason she became so famous because she is controversial because she does speak her mind and that makes her interesting and a good reality show kind of person. Yeah. Well, I don't think she'll have an issue. There's, I'm sure there's plenty other fish in the sea for someone like her. Dax number two. Number two, got to talk Met Gala. Obviously, this was the biggest thing going on in fashion this week. Everyone was talking about it. Photos were filling up my uh, my Instagram feed. I mean, I love, uh, honestly, I'm not a huge fashion person. It's not my thing. But I, for some reason, love the Met Gala. I like looking at the photos, like seeing all the crazy outfits, uh, you know, who's going this year, though, I'm going to say I felt like it was a little more boring than years past, Adam. And I don't know if you felt the same way. I totally agree. But, yeah, no, I, uh, I agree. Even that night, we were all talking how boring it was. Now, let me start with this. I worked the Met Gala. I didn't do the red carpet. I did the exits of the hotel. I was outside the Carlisle Hotel. Um, the fashion for the Met Gala could be usually interesting. This year, the fashion wasn't there was nothing over the top. I mean, Cardi B had this massive black dress that people are talking about. I mean, everyone looked good. No one did not you know look who bad. Had, you know who had crazy. The, the the two people that had the best Met Gala fashion were Lady Gaga and Katy Perry, and all they were were AI generated photos of yeah. them. <laughs> but I had they a were buddy the best mine. photos of the whole night. I was like, oh wow, look at this outfit. Oh, it's not even real, and they were the best outfits of the whole night. Yeah, I had a buddy of mine send me, he's like, dude, what's up with this look that Katy Perry's wearing? I was like, hey, you know that's not real, right? Um, I mean, all the dresses, everyone looked great. Everyone looked great. With that said, it just seemed like a very boring Met Gala. Even from, like, me being at the hotels, I didn't really even work it that hard. Reason was, was, yes, there was a lot of celebrities there. Kim Kardashian to Penelope Cruz to Nicole Kidman to Lana Del Rey to... Kendall Jenner to Camilla Cabello. Like there was tons of people there, but there was nobody exciting. There was not like a, a Celine Dion. There was not an Elon yeah. Musk. There wasn't a Christina Aguilera. There was, it's sort of like the same people that are sort of out there. Therefore, to me, it felt a little boring. And I think everyone else agreed. Everyone else, even the photographers are like, yeah, it's still the Met Gala. It's still cool. It's just not a memorable one. Reason is mm -hmm. a, the outfits were nothing too insane. Everyone looked great. The guest list, the people that actually showed up, it was no one too um, too, too rare. You want to see rare people yeah. there. I mean, Pamela Anderson was there, which you don't see her out too often. And she, she had a little – she had makeup on. We haven't she, seen her in makeup in quite some time. She kind of yeah, she, very publicly said she's not wearing makeup anymore, but she, she did she show some up makeup, some makeup. Which is fine. Yeah. And um, but other than that, like just the guest list that showed up were pretty boring. The parties I, were – I have again, to I, say I – I did think Doja Cat's outfit was probably the most interesting just sort of because nipples. it well, not not bad. I'm just talking about because all it was was a white T-shirt that was like a dress and it was wet. So I'm just picturing them like, OK, you ready to go off the white red carpet? OK, let's pour water all over you. So like in my mind, I'm just thinking about them pouring water all over backstage and then she's walking I just think like over the last couple of days, she's been out shopping, wearing like literally a bed sheet wrapped around her body. She's been where she shows up wearing like a towel. I just think she is so interesting to watch because her she reminds me of Lady Gaga when she first came out, like wearing fashion to get people talking. And that's what she, you know, she is a um, I don't know, a trend starter. Not that people are going to be walking around in wet T-shirts, but. I, I don't know. It was kind of interesting and different for the for the red carpet. Yeah, but I was outside the Carlo Hotel where a lot of people kind of leave. What happens at the Met Gala is that all the celebrities, not all of them, I would say about 80% of them all stay at the same two hotels, the Mark and the Carlisle Hotel. And they kind of share rooms with the designer. They're the makeup artist going back and forth to each room, like the hotel. The, the Met Gala takes over the hotel, and there's tons of fans on the street. The streets are kind of blocked off. And the exits of them leaving the hotel to go to the Met Gala. And I was sitting outside with the food photographers, and it's so weird. Nobody's comfortable. The celebrities come out and they could barely walk because they don't want to ruin their outfit. 
but they want to stop for the photographers and they kind of like have their team like pull out their dress so you could see the dress, take the shot. Um, and I saw, you know, I saw a decent amount of people. Um, but during the, when they started coming out, the free Palestine protests started going on around the area, like all over the area, these free Palestine mm-hmm. protests started happening, which had to redirect the car traffic. So it became a mess. Um, and then what happens is the event kind of goes, people kind of leave the hotel between 5.45 and 7.30, the latest usually. And then the event sort of ends at like 10. So it's not a long event by any means. I don't know what the food is. You know, it, it ends pretty quick. And then they go back to the hotel and change. And then they party from like 12. All of a sudden, pub, you'll get text messages from publicists. They'll send you like, hey, Cardi B's throwing a party here at 12 at midnight. Like, okay, she's throwing a party. And the parties go from like 12 to like 5 in the morning. And I just don't feel like – I didn't feel like staying up that late. Um and listen, it's just, it's like sort of like a complete mess. Instead, I woke up early and interviewed Oprah and that was pretty cool. And Oprah That's was so great. sick. By the way, I didn't realize that the Met Gala like has hosts and I've been covering this for many years. Like I didn't realize there's, host- I, I was reading that Zendaya, Jennifer Lopez, Bad Bunny and Chris Hemsworth were all hosts of this thing. And uh, obviously Anna Wintour. What do they do in there, though? Is this like, are they actually raising money for something? What I, I don't so I understand. Do think the point. They, do, they do raise money. Um, they Is are it? raising money for like the the Art Institute and for like the Metropolitan Museum, uh, the, the, the Met, you know, the museum, which, by the yeah. way, I live down the street from that museum. I went there once. It's not a great museum. It's kind of it's nice. It's a great area. It's a great location. It's yeah. got these like iconic steps. With that said, it's not like one of my favorite museums, but, you know, they do raise money. And to go to it, I mean, it's just so insanely expensive, um, you know, to sponsor a table and and everything. And it's like the fashion well, can we part s- of it. Can we, next year, can we step it back up? I like crazy. Bring on crazy outfits again. That It's costumes. I want to see costumes, not just pretty dresses. Yeah, no, I, I'm i with you on that. I get it. I get it. Um was gonna say but um yeah it was just a it was a non-memorable met gala actually the most memorable part was the free palestine protests because oh, more Jesus. people were talking about that which were just chaotic uh dax the number one story of the week number one story of the week tom brady's roast was shocking crude and filthy and amazing to a lot of people i have not seen it yet i I wanted to watch it, but I honestly can't right now because my surgery, it hurts to laugh. So I am postponing my watching of it until I can actually laugh again. Uh, But I've heard that it is amazing and it was so funny. And um, did you actually get a chance to watch it yourself? I did. I watched it live. Um, Incredible. Incredible. It was a great roast. So much better than the Comedy Central ones. A, because it was live, which I think added a different element to it. B, because they spent so much money. Um, like, you know, I don't know how much you pay Tom Brady to do a roast like that. I don't know how much you pay the writers because there's so many jokes because they have to have writing teams write jokes for not just the comedians because the comedians don't write all their – they write some of their jokes. But they have teams writing for them but then also writing for the other athletes that roasted Tom. But then you have people like Kim, Kim Kardashian there. I mean the, the names that were there – I mean, Ben Affleck's there. Ben, I don't know if he got paid to do it, but he might have. But, like, someone – I a lot of those comedians got paid to do roasts. Let's say they got paid $100,000 to do it. They took that money, and then they hired their own people for to, to write more jokes for them because everyone's trying to do great. It's a great commercial for them. So let's say you got paid $100,000 to do it. You take that $100,000, and you use it to spend to get more writers to write you more jokes because if you do well, like Nikki Glaser who crushed on the special, that was the best commercial for her. You know, that just, in, that pushed her stock so much higher where I could see her getting so many offers right now for anything. I mean, ticket sales for her shows have probably definitely sold out. She's got a new, she's going on tour. She has a new HBO special coming out this weekend. Yeah. So you, so, you invest in yourself and correct. then, yeah, and then you end up making a lot more money in the long term because you reinvested that money to write better jokes. Exactly. Smart. But, I mean, the thing that was most impressive is, like, Tom Brady. Like, I, I give him a lot of credit because it was really 
like no holds barred on like Tom let so, everything be spoken. So I didn't actually way. watch it like I was saying, but why did Kim Kardashian get booed so ferociously? Because I saw the clips of that online, but why did people just I not like her? Was she not funny or are people just being dickheads? I think people are just being dickheads and it's just easy to boo Kim Kardashian. Why is she here? Why is she here? But there are some rumors last summer that they were kind of flirting with each other, which was so fabricated and just rumors and you know i think she's just a good sport and it's a it's you know it's a comedy thing so she's making fun about herself and she actually did very well i think kim made fun of herself and she made fun of tom i mean she talked she, she was great kim was great and i think afterwards people you know i think i don't know if they booed her because i didn't really me personally as a viewer i didn't like lean into the where they booing her or cheering her but i thought she did great everyone did great for the most part, you know, everyone did well. And I gave Kim a lot of props because, you know, going there, she's going to get made fun of and she made fun of other people. I mean, I'm surprised. I can see down the line, Kim, them doing a roast of Kim. If Netflix is going to go this oh, route, Kim will investing 100%. a lot of money. She would be the best topic of a roast. Are you kidding me? Like with all the storylines, everything about Kim Kardashian, that would be one of the biggest roasts of all time. And people love to hate her too. People love to hate her, and we always say we're Team Kim. I think Tim Kim is great. I could see her being a great person to roast in the future, and it'll pay her a lot. It'll bring in a lot of viewers, and she gets it. And she's very you know, person. I think she's just very fun like that. I think she's you know who cool. doesn't get it? Giselle Bunchen. Not happy about all the jokes about her marriage to Tom Brady. Um, I guess there, the, you know, People Magazine did a whole story that she was really disappointed by the jokes. Uh, but here's the thing. It's a roast. Like that's the whole point of a roast is every aspect of these people's lives are going to be up for grabs that someone's going to make fun of. I guess the one thing that was supposedly kind of off limits, not that Tom himself had said that it's off limits, but the kids were off limits. So no making fun of the kids, uh, but everything else, you're pretty much good to go. And I think that's kind of a general rule of thumb for these things. Like, you don't make fun of people's kids, right? Like everything else you're good with, no making fun of their kids. Cause at yeah. the end of the day, they, you know, they're in school, they have friends. And if they're getting laughed at on a national level, like that's not cool. Here's the thing with Giselle. I can understand why she was upset because she didn't sign up for it. Tom did. However, it kind of goes to her, you know, and there's gonna be jokes about her and their relationship. So again, Tom signed up for it and he was on board she wasn't yeah, that's with that's with every roast every roast is like that and i'm sure that she, but she was didn't invited. sign up for the roast oh yeah you know but what? i'm I sure she was invited to be part of the roast and she probably passed on it because that she would have been awesome like for she her to so show up and roast would have been great yeah that had been awesome if giselle showed up for the roast that would have been really cool that would have been really fun and cool and honestly if i was worked as her publicist i would say do it show that mm -hmm. you guys are uh cordial you have other. a sense of humor because everyone i feel like looks at giselle like she's kind of a stick in the mud yeah i, I would agree with that um all right guys that is our raw rundown our top 10 stories of the week um thank you guys for listening if you're watching on youtube make sure you guys like and subscribe click right there that's a follow button right below us um, make sure you guys follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're on it all. We have a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which you guys should join. Follow me at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best thing you do support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we, we need hair gel. <laughs>